we are coming to the um, end of our second day and we have our last day tomorrow. It's been a really great conference. I'm Natasha Elkington and I'll be your host for this live session. <clears throat> and I'm very excited to introduce uh, my next guest, whose name is Perrine Hervé Courier, um, who started a farm in France um, from zero. And I'm very excited to welcome you. <clears throat> Before you speak, Perrine, thank you for joining us. I'd like to just tell the audience that, you know, please feel free to share your questions, tell us where you're signing in from. And also, um, where on Hoover, there's going to be simultaneous uh, translations into French. So just click on the session description and you will get the French translation. Um, and we are also streaming live on Facebook and we are ready to go. So Perrine, thank you for joining us. Merci. We have a bit of a, um, not a great connection because Perrine is in the countryside in France, <laughs> in Normandy. So yeah. let me just give my intro to, to, to the work that you do. Basically, Perrine and Charles Hervé Grier are known as a power couple and described as France's permaculture ambassadors and owners of the farm uh, La Ferme du bec um, a permaculture slash micro farm situated in Normandy and renowned for its vegetable and fruit productivity and revenue on a relatively small patch of land that also protects nature and creates biodiversity. Thank you for joining us. Um, just to tell us how you changed your lives in 2006. Well, Maybe short in fact, okay. In fact, what happened uh, happened in 2003. In 2003, we decided mm -hmm. to uh, change completely our lives and come to the countryside. We was self-sufficiency, in fact. And what we want to do is be able to feed the family with uh, good products, organic products. Um, so we started growing things in the garden and doing almost everything by ourselves. But then uh, very soon Charles told me, well, I love it so much. You know, I would like to do something more professional about it. Mm -hmm. So. He said, I want to be a farmer. I've always been a farmer, so I want to go for it. He said, hey, if you feel like it, go for it. But uh, I wasn't feeling the same way. You know, we had no farming background, no education in the field. So to me, it was just another world. It was something to grow things in, in the garden, but something else to become a farmer. Mm -hmm. But then he and, and you know the story, when you give somebody a hand, you end up with the, the full, full arm involved. Right. So yeah. that's what happened to me. <laughs> and on top of that, in eight, we found out about permaculture. So when Charles regis registered as a farmer in 2006, we knew about permaculture. Actually, we knew nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then in 2008, we found out about permaculture. And it was like, you know, a, a revelation to us. It put together uh, our love for nature, for the environment, and the, 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 the new love we had for farming. So from day one, from the day we found out about culture, everything made sense. Everything became local, and we understood a lot of this thanks to permaculture principles. Great. Are you still with us? I am still here. Okay, cool. Okay, <laughs> lovely. So, so I guess from there we can we you can tell us more about like for those of us who don't understand like what exactly is permaculture. Well, permaculture, very basic, very simple, but it's uh, so simple that it's sometimes a bit difficult to define. Mm -hmm. uh, if I might summarize, it's just common sense. Common sense based on the observation of mother nature. When you look at a system, I might say a natural ecosystem on which the human uh, hasn't put a hand, mm -hmm. um, you can see that some principles, there are some rules, and you just apply those rules to your farm. In fact, mimic nature when you apply permaculture principles. So permaculture is um, a conception system. It's a great technical uh, farming. 
uh, it has to do with the fact that of nature and you try to mimic that's very basic when you almost said nothing because permaculture um, uh, has a lot of principles that you can uh, apply to whatever you're doing either you are in a company in a school or on a farm like we are uh, there are many things that uh, helped us a lot and that are very interesting like you shall start small and I would say even you shall always be small it's one of the secrets mm -hmm. uh, you shall use as less energy as possible um, and um, you shall also on your system you shall make sure that every single element of the system runs several functions that you have a lot of uh, interactions between all the things that are, are, are in your system. Uh, if I can give an example, mm -hmm. uh, the horse, you know, we're working with a horse. Yeah. And um, when we work with the horse, we use the horse, if I must say, to work the, 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 the soil, even though we don't plow, we just work uh, in, as a base work. And, but the, the horse is also uh, efficient to carry things thanks to the horse. Sorry, I missed that. I'm missing the and last bit. Companion. Sorry, I just missed that last uh, bit. The horse is useful for a lot of things. You know? it, it, it's cleaner, it's a good one. It's going to give the manure that we need to grow the vegetables. So the horse, which is an element of the system, renders several functions. And you shall see a single element of your Sorry, could you just repeat the part, the last bit? You see every element? Every single element of the system mm -hmm. shall give, shall render several functions. And that's how you shall create an ecosystem. Every single element shall be for several things, several functions. Amazing. Amazing. So, um, so it's like it's like a bit like you know because I live in the city and um, you know we don't have a garden so we use our our balcony and I'm trying to like I realize that we don't actually need garb like there, there's no need for garbage like everything has a function like your 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 lemon peel your your lemon seeds like everything can be used back into nature is that what you're trying to get across yeah everything shall go back to nature you know I always say to my trainees when they come to the farm. Every single thing that comes from the soil shall go back to the mm. soil. And that's a rule, you know. Amazing. Amazing. So that's so basically that's that's how um, that's permaculture sort of in a nutshell. Mm. Yes, indeed. And, you know, thanks to the permaculture principle, we've managed to create a design on our farm that really mimics nature, that is like a, a, a natural ecosystem. Even though we work a lot, of course, I mean, the vegetables won't grow by themselves. If you don't help them, you won't grow them by, like this as a miracle. But the thing is, based on those principles and based on the observation of those interaction we've tried to create on the farm, while you manage to understand how things work and you manage to create more and more interactions. And then the more interactions you create, somehow the less work you have to do. You know, for example, we've planted a lot of trees. We've created a lot of ponds. Somehow we've tried to manage the best way we could the water system on our farm. And thanks to that, we hardly have to water, except in the oh, greenhouse, yeah. of course, because it's uh, very atypical as an environment. But beside that, we hardly have to water because we try as much as possible to use the water that is already there. And our job as a permaculture is to make sure that every single drop of water that will come into the system 
either from the well or either from rain, mm. we have to make sure that this drop of water will remain the longest possible in the soil. And that's basically what we have to do. Amazing. So could you just tell us a little bit about how your farm is designed? Because you said it was on 20 acres, uh, but it's only a quarter of an acre is where you do the vegetable farming, right? Yes, indeed. But still, the, the, mm. the full ecosystem is useful to whatever we are doing, which doesn't mean a micro farm shall be as big as our farm. A micro farm, you know, could be uh, four acres or one hectare as we say in, in France, that's no problem. You need some space to grow the vegetables or to grow whatever food you, you're willing to grow, but you also need some space to make sure that your ecosystem is gonna work, that you're gonna have enough organic matter to feed the soil wherever it, it needs to be fed, actually. Wow. It's very interesting. So, so um, I, I assume I'm going to have to take uh, questions from the audience, even though I have so many of my own here um, mm -hmm. um, to, uh, to, to pose to you. So what, I guess my last question from uh, where I'm coming from, in terms of like, so with, with small farmers, could, could they keep, like you said, like with, a, with one acre, they could still follow, like if I had an acre, and like sort mm -hmm. of follow your, your, the permaculture way of uh, farming, um, I, I could still produce a lot of, a lot of vegetables, right? And, and self-sustain. So if we spread this yeah, all over the world, know, this could change You know, we, hmm. we, we thought that um, uh, we could produce a lot on a small scale when we first started. And in 2010, some engineers from uh, Agro Paritech, which is a big uh, university for farming here in France. Yes. They came to us and they said, well, is your system really worth it? I mean, how much money do you make out of it? So we've started an experiment from 2010 and for, we, we led that experiment for five years, in fact, to show that in fact, on 1000 square meters, we could, make a decent living for one person. So one person who wants to create its own farming way or to grow vegetables on a very small scale is able to make a proper living. What we call the proper living is the equivalent to the minimum um, wage uh, in France, minimum salary, which is the equivalent of 1,000 uh, 200 euros uh, almost. And we wanted to prove that a vegetables, vegetable market grower could do that on a very small scale. You know, usually people say that to do this type of, uh, of, of figures, to, to achieve this type of results, you need 10 times more land than what we use. Wow. And we wanted to show that if you do everything by hand, without any fossil fuel, respecting mother nature and mimicking its principles and rules, you could be far more efficient than if you'd use a big tractor on a very big plot of land. And we've succeeded. In 2015, wow. we've uh, released the, 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 the results think, of the, mm -hmm. the experiment. And we've managed to prove that. So, you know, it's funny to say that in 2020, whereas everybody wants to go to the most technical things, the most um, uh, elaborated uh, type of uh, engines and stuff, we uh, basically only with our hands, we've managed to, uh, to prove that you can grow a lot of food on a very small scale. Amazing. So then, I mean, okay, so, I, you know, like, because I'm tuning in from Kenya. So here in Africa, you know, where we have all this, you know, we have no food, we have no food. There's no reason why we should have no food if we follow this way of farming. No, I'm completely convinced that if you have a web of very small entities, they are high maintenance, but they are very efficient. So if you have a web of small uh, farms like those, that are designed to feed the people because you know we in France you might not have the same problem in Kenya but in France we have a big problem with the farms they are not meant to meant to feed the people they are meant 
to sell some wheat uh, abroad and to make money out of it. So we have to make sure that with the small scale farms, we're gonna feed the communities and that's what we want to see. And we can make sure that based on permaculture principles and bio-intensive farming, you can manage to feed every single village properly with a lot of efforts, of course, but far less than what usually people do uh, in farming. So you just have a look at your environment, have a look at how mother nature functions where you live, where you are, and you try to imitate whatever's happening and you'll see things gonna work. Wow, amazing. I mean, everyone, so I guess, you know, we have a question from the audience here because I, I can carry on chatting with you um, for, the, for, for the rest of the day, honestly. So basically, so how do we make farming more appealing then, I guess, to, you know, smallholder you know, farmers or people who have a little bit of land? How, how do we, we start this trend where everyone can join in and re reduce this whole food insecurity issue that the world is facing at the moment? Well, funny enough, here in Europe, the trend is on. Uh, a lot of people from the city, youngsters from the cities with quite a high level of education, they want to go back to the land. And you know, the, um, the sanitary crisis we've been through, uh, the, the, the COVID-19 crisis, mm -hmm. um, has proven that it is not a perfect way of life to live in the city. Of course, the cities are appealing because people believe that the jobs are in the cities, the funny things are in the cities. Mm -hmm. But now we, we are facing a movement here in France that makes young people with a high level of education, good salaries, good jobs, wanting to go back to the countryside to grow their own vegetables, to grow their own food because um, their lives are lacking sense, they are lacking of meaning, you know what I mean? Right. And therefore, it seems that nowadays they are not completely seduced only by money and a big car and a nice apartment uh, and stuff like those. They are really trying to seek a meaning, a way, you know, to live their lives. And actually, that's how Charles and myself started a long time ago. Amazing, amazing. I, I mean, you see, like here in Africa, mostly farming is for when you get old and retire, then you go to farm. But I'm seeing there's also a trend happening here, you know, uh, where young people are understanding the importance and even the, the revenue, the money that you can make from farming yeah. rather than being in an office job, right? Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of, uh, at first, we've delivered a lot of uh, very trendy and nice restaurants, either in Paris or to, in closer cities from here. And that could be a trend, you know? You can convince young people to go to farming because they could uh, produce good quality products for restaurants. And then they will realize that not only restaurants are interesting, but it's also interesting to feed the people around you because you recreate some links in the community. You can create employment. So who would dream of anything different? I mean, you leave in a good quality uh, surroundings to me. I mean, you've got a good quality of lives. You can create jobs. You create happiness and health because it is healthy to, good, uh, to eat uh, good quality products, especially when they are organic and especially when they are vegetables. So what else can you ask? You know, it creates uh, a lot of dynam different, a different dynamic in the, in the countryside where we are living where hardly anything happens, you know, sometimes it's a, bit it's a bit difficult. But here, when you open the farm, you realize how important it is because everybody comes to the farm and they talk to each other. And you know, when they come to the farm shop, they do not behave the same way at all than if they were going to the supermarket. I mean, the behavior, the, the, the interactions are not the same at all. So. Just like permaculture says, you put the human being at the middle of the ecosystem, you know, and you take into consideration the, 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 the feelings that the humans being, human beings might have, either the farmer or the consumer. So to us, it was really, really amazing to, to realize how much this farm is rich 
not in terms of vegetables, not in terms of soil, certainly not in terms of money, but in terms of uh, relationships, really. Amazing. Amazing. So, um, I mean, we're coming to the end of our wonderful session. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's, two, there's two things that I'm getting from our audience um, that uh, I'd like to share with you. So from our poll on, on Facebook Live, it, it looks mm -hmm. like 45% of our viewers are familiar with permaculture, but yet 55% are not. So just to give you that information. So I guess the question would be like, how, 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 do, young, how do people get more um, informed on permaculture? Before uh -huh. you answer that, then the last, I guess we could close off where young people are asking, you know, how can they get access to farms? You know, like, I guess to buy a piece of land today is not, is not such an easy thing, or is it? No, yeah, or, yeah, 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 that's a real issue. I mean, uh, putting a hand on, on, on the land is the most difficult part of it, uh, maybe with the training part. But uh, yes, indeed, the land is the key. And I think, you know, the people who own the land shall be more um, into this type of new farming, which is the case now in France, you know, it, they, on a daily basis, I receive several emails from people owning the land and willing to either rent or give mm -hmm. or leave it to people who would like to, to grow things on their land. So, things are coming step by step, maybe not everywhere in the world, because in some countries we've been where we shouldn't have been. I mean, in France, we've been to a place where, you know, you've got some farm that are 200, 300 hectares wide, which is just crazy. We just one man on a tractor on this mm. land. And people tend to go back to something more human. Even the consumers, they want uh, uh, the, 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 the way their the food is produced to change. They don't want uh, pesticides or herbicides or all those products anymore. So they tend to have a good influence on the, the way agriculture is developing now. And I think every single country will follow. It depends where you are now on your way, but it, it will come. There will be a time where people will realize how rich it is to have some land and every single piece of land shall be shared for those who want to grow food on it. Well, that's, that's uh, what was the first question? I forgot now. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I forgot it too. No, so basically it was just, just giving you information that basically in terms of our viewers, 45% of our viewers know um, about permaculture, whereas 55% yeah, yeah, uh, are not. So it looks good. like if, if we take it as a you know, balance for the world, then you know, half the world is knows and half doesn't. So it's just, I guess, yeah, yeah. It's spreading Which awareness. Interesting figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I guess, you know, because now we have to wrap up, unfortunately, these... Um, these live sessions I find are too short. Half an hour seems long, but then when you get into it, it's just very short. That's true, that's true. <laughs> um, so I guess maybe as a closing statement, I, I'll give you the floor, whether you want to do it in English or in French, but you know, any messages you, or message you have for um, young people out there or anyone out there who wants to start permaculture or the importance of farming or anything you want to share that maybe we haven't covered that you'd like to you know, close with. Please uh, uh -huh. go ahead. Well, I think I think um, going back to this type of uh, of small small scale farming is really appealing. I mean, even to those uh, young people who who have been to university and who wanted to do something else with their lives to 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 make a lot of money. But again, if you have a look at your life and you want to find a meaning, I mean, going back to what is true, what is authentic, is the soil, the land, and the ecosystem. So if you feel like a part of you would like to go to farming, just give it a try. Go to a farm, give the farmer a hand, and test yourself and see if it fits you. And, you know, a lot of us had uh, ancestors who were farmers, so we have it in our genes. So try, give it a try. Not everybody is going to become a farmer tomorrow, but for sure, this new world we all want to appear will have a lot of newcomers in the farming field. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Karin. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Natasha. I hopefully maybe we can do a longer session coming uh, yeah, in, yeah. in the future where we can discuss more. Merci.
Less technical issues, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Minus the technical issues. Yeah, but if you send us your pictures, then we'll find a way to put them on video. Okay, um, I on will. our session. Okay, merci. Thank you okay, so, so much. Merci. Thank, thank you, thank you. And thank you, our audience and everyone who's tuned in um, to our session. Uh, we thank you for joining us.